guys and welcome to episode one of Girl With Camera, the series for those of you who are sick of all photo tutorials online just being guys talking about technical things with bikini clad models running around in the background for no apparent reason. So this episode one is all about light and photography is the capturing of light. Once you get this shiz down, you are good to go. There are basically three ways of controlling light on your camera. Number one is ISO, number two is aperture, and number three is shutter speed. Let's start with ISO. ISO is the sensitivity of the actual component that's taking the image. So the lower the ISO number, the less sensitive it is, and the higher the ISO number, the more sensitive it is. So you want to use your low ISO number in bright situations like a sunny day, a, you know, day in the snow, and your high ISO number for low light situations like your grandpa's birthday dinner. And the upside of high ISO numbers is that you can get more out of a low light situation, but the downside is that you get a lot of grain. Now some people like the grainy look, but the problem is once you have grain, you are losing details in your photo, you can't really crop in. Not everybody wants to make their photos look like they were taken in the 1920s. Secondly, aperture. Now aperture is just how wide the shutter opens and so how much light it lets in every time you take a picture. Aperture is measured by the f-stop and the lower the f-stop the more light it lets in so it's great for those low light situations. The higher f-stop lets in less light so it's better for brighter situations. f-stop also controls depth of field though. So the lower your f-stop, the more lightly you're letting in, but also the blurrier your background or anything that you're not focused on is. Here's an example of a low f-stop photo. And as you can see, the subject is in focus and everything else is blurred, which is great for things like portraits and when you just wanna focus in on a tiny little detail. But if you want everything to be in focus, you need to use a high f-stop. So for things like landscape photography, such as this image over here, you want to use a high f-stop and balance your light with the other two controls. Finally, there's shutter speed. And shutter speed is literally just how quickly your shutter closes when you press the button. The slower your shutter speed, the more light is let in, and the faster your shutter speed, the less light is let in. But with those slow shutter speeds, because your shutter's open for so long, it's also capturing any motion that might be going on whilst it's open, which might be a good thing, like when you wanna capture how fast something's moving so you keep your subject in focus and everything else is in a motion blur, or it can be a bad thing where everything just ends up pretty damn blurry. So when you have like little kids running around and all that stuff, you want a high shutter speed so that you can capture them and make them be still at least in a picture if not in real life. Shutter speed is measured in seconds so if you see 1 over 100 that's 1 100th of a second and then usually if you have anything more than a second, a second or more then you just have like a 1 with a little like inches mark, quotation mark, and that just means that is one full second or two full seconds. I would say anything under one over maybe 60 is a pretty slow shutter speed and everything over one over 300 is quite a fast shutter speed. Those three things, your ISO, your aperture, and your shutter speed work together to form your little triangle of light for photography and you need to balance them correctly to make sure you're avoiding those nasties that you don't want like blurred photographs, too much noise in your photos and making sure that you're focusing on the right thing. You need to go away and have a play around with those measurements to see which, what balance of the three things you can use in what situations and you can also get pretty like creative with them, you know, with motion blurs and all that stuff, but we'll cover that in videos to come. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if it's helped you with anything in any way, then please do send us your photos because we will share them and we'd love to see them. 
Leave a comment below suggesting anything that you've had trouble with in your photography adventures and we'll try and address them in future videos. And also if you have any challenges that you've come across, any cool photography projects that you'd like me to take up in these videos, then I would love to read them, love to see them, love to try them. And make sure you come back again for more episodes of Girl With Camera. Thanks for watching guys, see you in the next one.